By the way, are you doing anything this weekend? No. Well then, I need you to find out everything there is to know about H.323 and I need to know everything by Monday. Okay, I guess I didn't have anything to do this weekend. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hi Jay, it's Krista. Hi Krista, what's going on? Do you have a few seconds? I have some video conferencing questions to ask you. Sure, what do you need? My company wants to add video conferencing into our meetings and I have to research video over IP. People keep talking about H.323, but I don't really understand what it is. I know that you've worked at Polycom for years, so I thought you might be able to give me some insight? No problem. Funny you should mention this. I was just thinking about one of my professors who explained this very clearly to me. I can still picture them in my mind. H.323 is an umbrella recommendation from the International Telecommunications Union, or ITU, that sets standards for multimedia communications over packet-based networks. H.323 allows users to conference from a LAN to a remote site. Is there any way that H.323 can be explained in a slightly simpler way for me? Sure, that's more of the official definition. I see H.323 kind of like a freeway system. Information travels over IP lines like cars do over a highway. The H.323 components, the terminal, the gateway, the gatekeeper, can all be related to components of a freeway model. For starters, multiple cars travel on the same freeway at the same time just like multiple pieces of information travel on the same network at the same time. Information can enter the network at multiple points and exit when it needs to. If we're on the same network and I'm sending email at the same time that you're downloading a web page, all of that information is on the network at the same time. This is just like if I'm going downtown and you're going to the grocery store. We're on the same freeway at the same time. Right. Networks have many of the same problems as a freeway as well, like speed, and congestion. On a freeway with many lanes and little traffic, cars travel quickly and smoothly. Now if it's rush hour or there are too few lanes for all the traffic, then traffic slows down. The busier the highway, the longer it can take for a car to go from point A to point B. This is the same with information traveling on the network. So the more congested the network is, the longer it takes for information to reach its destination. So that's why when we were all told to download the updated version of this program we use at work, the network was really slow. It was because everyone was trying to download the file at the same time. Exactly. Or, just like another problem on a freeway can be too few lanes of traffic to flow smoothly, the same holds true if there's too little bandwidth on a network. Imagine a highway flowing smoothly with four lanes during rush hour. Now take the same number of cars and put them on a two-lane highway. The traffic would slow down. The same goes for network traffic. A file of information can travel much faster on a 512 megabits per second line than it can on a 128 megabits per second line. Okay, I get it. So let's say a network is down and all communication is blocked. That would be like a traffic accident, right? Exactly. So tell me how this information goes over a network. Okay, picture audio, video, or data information as a person. In order for this information to be sent over IP, it must be organized into a certain sequence. This sequence is called an H.323 packet. So in order for a piece of information to travel over an IP network, it must be organized into an H.323 packet. Just like, in order for a person to travel on a freeway, they must be in a car. The packet, the car, is holding the information, the person. So the information now gets onto the network. If you want to send information over the internet, the information leaves your computer and enters the internet through an internet service provider, an ISP, like an on-ramp. The information travels along the internet with other packets of information. When the information reaches the appropriate internet address, it's downloaded through the recipient's ISP, like an off-ramp. Let me see if I understand this. The information merges on and off of the network, like I merge on and off of the freeway every morning when going to work. Just like I get off the freeway at my exit, information on the network gets off of the network at the right endpoint. Is that right? You've got it. The endpoint is called the terminal. As it relates to Polycom and video conferencing, for example, it would be, say, a Polycom view station. A terminal is an endpoint on the network that provides for real-time, 
two-way communications with another terminal or a gateway. But what does it mean to be an H.323 terminal? I mean, what does an H.323 terminal have to be able to do? The terminal relays the information regarding control, indications, audio, moving color video, pictures, and data between two terminals. All terminals must support voice communication, but video and data are optional. Audio. H.323 terminals must support the G.711 voice standard for speech compression. A gateway would be like our person in the car getting to the end of the road and having to take a train to their final destination. Since you can't drive a car on tracks, the person has to take the train. So the act of going through the ticket booth and getting a ticket for the train is like the H.323 packet going through the gateway and being able to now travel over an ISDN line? Yes. All right, what about this? I've heard people complain about choppy video when going over an IP network. What's that? Information is sent over the internet over multiple packets. Kind of like multiple people going to the same location in a caravan. Have you ever been in a caravan and been separated from other cars in your group because of traffic? Sure. And when you arrive at your destination, you have to wait until the other cars arrive, right? Yeah. Well, if there's network congestion, the packets will be separated too and even go out of order. Since information from many different sources are on the IP network at the same time, the greater the network bandwidth, the better the performance. I know this has been a lot of information, but has it answered your questions? Yes. Now I just have to drive this information home when I talk to my boss. Thanks. Bye. Sure. See ya. Vroom, 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 vroom. Morning. I thought you were going to tell me everything there is to know about H.323. That's right, Dennis. Pull up a chair, fasten your seatbelt, we're going for a drive.